Hi, I'm Stephanie, and today I want to talk about high frequency oscillatory ventilation and how to set up the oscillator. The oscillator is used for pulmonary conditions that have a very low lung compliance, such as like infant respiratory distress syndrome. Um, there are a few differences between the oscillator and just a regular conventional ventilator. One of those big differences is that the oscillator uses over 150 breaths per minute, whereas the conventional ventilator usually uses a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute on infants. Um, the other difference that is very important between the oscillator and the conventional vent is that the tidal volume being delivered by the oscillator is a lot smaller than the dead space it has to go through. This whole arm is dead space. Um, when setting up the oscillator, the first thing you want to do is plug it into the electrical outlet along with the oxygen and air hoses. The next thing you want to do is to turn it on. Then you're going to pick your settings. Your FiO2, your mean airway pressure, your piston placement, your amplitude, inspiratory time, frequency, and your alarms. Your FiO2 is set by a blender located on the side and it's analyzed by an oxygen analyzer. The next thing that you can set is the inspiratory time. It's usually set around 33%, but it can be adjusted by moving the knob. Um, the next thing you're going to want to set is the frequency. The frequency is how many breaths per minute that's going to be delivered to the infant. The big difference between the frequency here on the oscillator and the respiratory rate set on the conventional vent is that the frequency is measured in hertz. One hertz is equal to 60 breaths per minute. It's usually set around 10 to 15 depending on the size of your infant. 15 hertz is usually reserved for the smaller infants where 10 hertz is more likely to be used on larger infants. So here we can pick 13 because it's just in the middle. So you adjust it by using that knob. The next thing you're going to set is your amplitude, which is located up here. It's easier to set the amplitude when you start the ventilator. Okay, so right now we have it blocked by the end piece. So it's maintaining the pressure inside the expiratory limb. You're gonna wanna make sure that you set all your settings that you want to go to your infant before you actually hook it up to the infant. So the amplitude is going to be responsible for your CO2 removal or keeping your CO2 in your infant. And it's gonna be reflected in your blood gases. It's usually set around 23 to 25 centimeters of water pressure. It's basically your tidal volume and pressure form. Um, an easy way to think about amplitude is in wave. So the wave is a diagram like this, and your amplitude is going to be the height of the wave. So like the height of inspiration and the height of exhalation. The smaller the amplitude, the smaller the breath which means the less CO2 that's going to be removed, which increases your pH to become more acidotic. The larger the amplitude or the larger waveform that you're going to have is going to remove more CO2, making your pH more alkalotic. The last thing that you're going to set is your mean airway pressure. And this is usually between well, there's a couple different ways that you can set it. One way is if you're moving your infant from a conventional ventilator to the oscillator, you're gonna want to set your mean airway pressure two centimeters of water pressure above what was being measured on the conventional vent. Um, so that means like if they were only getting nine, you would just set it up like that. So you'd want to go down to about 12, 11.
Okay. Next thing you're going to set is your alarms. It's three above and three below the mean airway pressure. So if you're set it at 11, you're going to want it set at 14 and 8. Okay. After all your settings are done, you're going to want to monitor your patient. This is done by chest x-rays. You want to maintain optimal lung volume, which is seen by lung inflation between eight and a half and nine ribs. Over expanding your lungs, which is over eight, over nine ribs, <laughs> it's going to lead to over distension, which can lead to hypoxemia, um, lung damage, decreased venous returns, things like that. The other thing you're going to want to monitor constantly is your blood gases. You're going to make um, changes to your oscillator depending on the values. If their PCO2 is high, you're going to want to increase your amplitude and decrease your frequency. If their CO2 is low, you're going to want to increase, no, you're going to want to decrease your amplitude and increase the frequency. If their PO2 is high, you're going to either want to decrease your FiO2 or your mean airway pressure. If their PO2 is low, you're going to want to check the x-ray, make sure that you're not over distended. If you are over distended, you want to decrease your mean airway pressure. If your optimal lung volume, then you're going to want to either increase your mean airway pressure or increase the FiO2. If you want to stop and listen to the infant's lungs, you can pause it by hitting the start stop button, which maintains your mean airway pressure as well as your FiO2. After you're done auscultating the infant, just hit the start stop button and it resumes the amplitude and the frequency. So, hope you learned a lot. Thanks for listening.